So this is a DNA tape lift that's used by forensic experts to remove cells uh, from various surfaces, including from skin. So there's a, a sticky side and there's a non-sticky side. So what I'm going to do is press the sticky side firmly onto the arm and each time I do that, hundreds of cells are being removed. So I'll do that probably about a dozen times uh, or until there's no stickiness left. And at the end of that, you'll get a tape lift that has many, many hundreds of cells, all containing uh, good quality DNA. If I've got 100 tape lifts and I test every single one of them, I should get a profile every single time. These kinds of samples should never fail. Uh, in February 2013, the laboratory tested the tape lift collected by the scientific officer from Shandy's left forearm and they stopped the analysis after stage two because they said that no DNA was detected. So that sample wasn't fully tested. I think it's incredible. So tape lifts taken from somebody's body, uh, like we saw with the, the left forearm, uh, should have many hundreds of cells. So it's, it's a really rich source of DNA. So a forensic laboratory should absolutely get DNA from a sample like this the first time it's tested. I think potentially out of those 43 samples, there, there, there could be one or many uh, of those samples that could provide DNA, and, and it could provide DNA that could assist the police in resolving this matter. It could have the DNA from the offender, uh, or it could have uh, DNA from Shandy, uh, from the vehicle. We, we just don't know. So when the left forearm sample was reworked and provided a DNA profile, that should have sent alarm bells ringing across the laboratory because what it demonstrated is at the time a majority of the samples from Shandy's case were tested, uh, it, there appears to have been some really critical flaws uh, in that testing process that prevented a DNA profile from being tested. So there should have been a, a full audit, a full review, everything should have stopped and they should have gone back and retested all of those samples that didn't provide any detectable DNA the first time. So the left forearm sample to me is, is critical. What it demonstrates is that the testing processes were flawed when a majority of the samples were originally tested. It demonstrates that the lab knew that. So when they fully tested the left forearm sample and they got a profile, they now know that that process or those processes were flawed. So why didn't they go back and retest everything? They had time. So the rework happened in July 2014, 16 months after it was originally tested and provided no DNA profile. And this was still two or three years before the trial. So there was still a lot of time for the laboratory to go back and retest everything. Further, what they should have done is they should have alerted the police immediately of this issue. And that doesn't appear to have happened.